okay? Normally, this problem is called force flow. You force the fluid to flow and you heat it up or cool it down along the way, okay? There's two ways to do it. First, if you have a pipe, Temperature in is T0, okay? If you keep temperature of the wall of the pipe everywhere to be T1, okay? The surface of the pipe is somehow kept to be constant temperature. Suppose this one is hot, this one is cold. If T1 is lower than T0. What you have here would be temperature difference at the inlet of the pipe would be large. Right? This one is hot. Once the fluid flow along the pipe, it would cool down further and further. If the pipe is infinitely long, the temperature at the outlet is supposed to be equal to T1. Right? So that means driving force or temperature difference between outside of the pipe and liquid inside, the temperature difference is smaller and smaller along the Z direction. In the word, temperature gradient or driving force for conduction in R direction reduce as the pipe is longer and longer. So if you look into conduction or the heat transfer, Out here, the flux is high because temperature difference is large. Down here, the flux is lower. So Q here and Q there are not equal and flux is lower and lower along the way. Okay? On the other hand, if you have temperature of fluid T0, flowing along the pipe. And somehow, you draw the same amount of heat to be equal along the pipe, to be Q0 like this. How can we do that? By changing temperature of the outside wall along the way, right? So if T1 here is smaller or colder than T0. And you want to keep the heat flux here and there to be equal. Temperature here cannot be equal to T1 anymore because liquid inside the pipe, right now down here, temperature is already dropped. Liquid is partially cool, okay? So therefore, if you want to keep the same flux, temperature here T2, supposed to be lower than T1 to keep it colder further, right? This is called um, somewhat like constant energy flux. This is constant temperature. They're not the same, okay? For our problem here is constant temperature. So therefore, we can take this, this boundary condition, okay? We take temperature outside to be constant. That's constant temperature. If we change the problem from constant temperature to constant heat flux, this one's supposed to be changed. Right? What does it look like if the problem is constant heat flux? Now for constant heat flux at R, equal to capital R, any Z, what do you know? You know flux, right? That means Q supposed to be Q0 at the wall. Of course, Q here comes from conduction in R direction. That means minus K dt by dr at R equal to capital R 
equal to Q0. That's how we put the boundary condition for the case of constant heat flux. Everything else would be exactly the same. You don't need to repeat the whole problem again. Just change boundary condition. Of course, the final equation for temperature profile would be different. All right? This problem will be used again in chapter 14. I'm going to talk about that later on. But don't worry, I'm not going through the integration part. I'm just going to give you the <coughs> equation for temperature profile. If you are interested in how to solve this equation, I suggest you to read the, the textbook and try to do it by yourself. If you cannot do it by yourself, you can attend another class called Advanced Transport Phenomena. We will teach you how to do that. All right? Any question? Yes? No. Work itself, work itself is force multiplied by distance. Okay? But in our shear balance, it's not work itself, it's work rate. Yes, because input and output term will be rate of energy transfer. That should have unit of joule per second. Work, I mean force multiplied by distance is joule. We need joule per second, joule divided by seconds. All right.